thank you everyone for attending today's session with CAPCO. Um, it's a very popular subject. Uh, we have quite a lot of um, registered attendees for today. Um, so we'll start by saying that um, it, we want it to be a, a very interactive session. However, we would like it, you, if you have any questions, to use the Q&A button that you've got on your screen there to um, raise your questions and we'll come to them throughout the presentation. Um, we will also have a few polling questions during the presentation. So again, please uh, have them answered to the best of your knowledge and understanding. Um, and thank you once again. So I will pass on to Sarah Callan, who is going to introduce her colleagues leading the presentation today. So thank you. Thank you, Leah. Hello, everyone, and a very warm welcome to today's CAPCO webinar on the future of business analysis. Um, I hope the content today is very relevant to this audience. We're so happy to see so many people signing up. Um, so it's obviously quite a popular topic. Um, and thank you for joining us today. Thanks to the SIO for having us back. This is, I think, the seventh um, webinar that we've run as part of the partnership that we have um, with SIO. And we're very happy to be back once again to close out the year. Um, so I'm Sarah O'Callaghan. I am the partnerships lead here at Capco Scotland. I'm a managing principal and part of the Scotland leadership team here in Edinburgh. Um, I'm also heavily involved in the digital agenda UK wide here at Capco, and I'll be moderating the session today and leading the Q&A at the end. But our main speakers today, as you can see on the screen, are Johnny Molum and Olga Karantanu. Both are heavily involved in our digital practice and both have worked extensively in the BA space. Um, so you're in very safe hands today and this content is very topical at the moment. So I will let you introduce, I will let them introduce themselves shortly. Um, but before we do that, just a quick note on CAPCO for those of you that may not know us. So CAPCO are a global management and technology consultancy dedicated solely to financial services. We have over 5,000 people globally. And I guess more relevantly, we have approximately on the screen here, it says 275. I think that number has risen since we made the slide. So um, the number is continuing to grow here in Scotland. We are, are on quite a large growth spurt. Um, you'll see there on the slide that we've had pr pretty rapid growth for Capco Scotland over the past few or the past five years since opening. Um, we have a large digital practice and we work with our clients very much on digital transformation. Um, we're in and around the tech and business change space in FS. Um, we do a lot of thought leadership within the industry as well. So as I said, this topic is very relevant today. We have a large ways of working community with many agile BAs and also a very extensive range of traditional BAs as well, Capco wide. Um, so I hope you find it relevant today. The content is very interesting. Um, and now over to you, Johnny. Excellent. Thank you, Sarah. And uh, thanks, Leah. Uh, again, uh, good morning to, to everyone. It's great to, great to be back for another lunchtime webinar with the, uh, with the SIO. Uh, by way of quick introduction, I'm, I'm Johnny Mullen, Senior Consultant in uh, CAPCO, part of the Digital Consulting Practice. I'm based here in, in Edinburgh in Scotland. Uh, I've been with the firm for around about three and a half years now, working across a number of uh, financial services domains, including wealth and asset management, insurance and life and pensions. Most of my consulting life has been spent in BA or, or kind of BAS roles and primarily within the technology advisory and change space. Prior to joining Capco, I was actually in quite a, a different field uh, in the world of, of digital marketing, where I spent around six years in various digital marketing agencies and then laterally at, uh, at Standard Life, just seeing the, uh, the attendees today, I actually see some familiar names from the old days at uh, Standard Life on Mobian Road. So great to see you here. Uh, and, and for those of you who ever do want to chat about social media or SEO, do get in touch. You know, once an SEO geek, always an SEO geek, as they say. I'm also, in my personal life, a recent dad with a little seven-month-old who is, uh, is keeping us busy when we're not at work and married to an American from, from Boston. So before getting into today's, uh, into today's content, I'll hand over to Olga for a, a quick intro. 
Thanks, Johnny. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Olga Carantano, and I'm a consultant in Capco's digital consulting practice for a bit more than a year, also based in Edinburgh. I have six years of BA experience with transformations in financial services, three out of which as a digital product owner on JP Morgan Private Bank. And currently, I'm working on the product strategy, design, and client journey on the process of fully digitalizing the client onboarding of an international bank. I am originally from Athens, Greece, as you can most probably tell from my accent, but I've been living in Scotland for the past seven years. That's it from me for now, and back to you, Johnny. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Olga. So again, very pleased to be here today to, to talk to everyone about the, the future of business analysis, which I admit is a, a fairly lofty title. Uh, however, before we get into the, the kind of core presentation content, I thought it would be worthwhile providing some background, which can help to contextualize how this content came about and how it formed the basis of an ongoing live client engagement that we have with one of our clients here in Scotland today. So as we all know, the effects of the pandemic on organizations have been far reaching and industry agnostic. COVID has impacted every business, every industry and every sector. Across the board, we're seeing the acceleration of new ways of working initiatives and digital transformation programs at an exponential rate. Our client was no different, but importantly, they faced a key challenge and that was all around their, their workforce. To be more specific, it was their several hundred strong business analyst community, which spanned multiple functions and departments within the organization. Their focus was on building a more resilient, leaner and efficient business, and they needed to support their BA community to not only deliver the solutions that would help them to achieve these goals, but also to develop the agile decision making frameworks uh, to ensure the organization was, was moving at pace. They needed their BAs to shift from the traditional tactical requirements gathering linear role spending time solely analyzing and documenting requirements into a more strategic one where strategic analysis and a laser focus on customer experience and product centricity were required. Over a period then of uh, three weeks, the Capco team were, were brought in and engaged to conduct an initial maturity assessment. Throughout that time, we interviewed, surveyed, observed, we talked to business analysts and their teams, and we also uh, interviewed other business stakeholders in order to get a better understanding, a kind of holistic view of the key challenges, pain points, and opportunities. And from this, it became quite clear that there was a significant skills gap in the BA community. Employee upskilling and reskilling was fixed with limited scope for variation across focus areas. And there wasn't enough opportunity to get exposure between business functions. Growing areas such as data, digital technology, just weren't incorporated into the learning and development plans for business analysts specifically. The freedom and flexibility to try out new things and innovate just wasn't part of the day job, nor was it a key focus, importantly, for senior management and those people who are hiring business analysts into their teams. With this, the BA community was becoming stale. They were being reassigned to the same types of projects and their scope for growth and moving into the realm of strategy was very limited. So the content that we're gonna talk through today was designed based on the research that Capco conducted and the recommendations that we put forward for how to manage those challenges effectively, whilst not only retaining the BA workforce, but also enabling them to adapt and remain relevant, whilst also fulfilling the primary objectives of the business. So with that being said, uh, let's take a quick look at today's agenda and we can get into some of the interesting stuff. So as you can see, we're, we're going to kick off with a brief overview on some of the key trends that we're seeing in terms of uh, demand for business analysts. And then we'll talk through the evolution of the BA, covering four distinct categories or pillars. We'll then discuss other key areas involving career pathways and the Capco view on how you can set your organization up for success by developing meaningful learning and development programs for your BA community and cross business line COPs or communities of practice. We'll then wrap up with some time for Q&A at the end. And uh, as Sarah and Leah both mentioned, please do continue to post any comments or questions that you have in the Q&A section on Zoom. 
and we'll pick those up at the end. We'll also make sure to leave a good amount of time so that we can get through as many as possible. But for any that we can't get through, we'll be sure to, to do a follow up uh, and provide all the information that's been requested. There's also going to be a couple of polls throughout the session, so do look out for those. Uh, but now let's take a look at the increasing demand that we're seeing for what we at Capco call the modern BA. So across the market, we're seeing no slowdown in the, in the demand for those who specialize in business analysis. But what's been particularly interesting over the last five to 10 years in particular, as the, ad, uh, as the age of agile has really taken hold, is the demand for a different type of BA who can focus on strategic level thinking and has a solid understanding of the business domain in which they're operating, the changing environment and the ability to collaborate effectively across all stakeholder groups, whether those be functional on the business side or technical on the development and functional side, uh, excuse me, on the, on the development and solution side. Moving from a requirements manager or documenter to a more enterprise-based strategic solution focus. Some of the key drivers behind this demand includes increased expectation that user experience is at the forefront of product and service design, heightened even further by the daily interaction that many of us have on our phones and our, our, our kind of digital tools with the Amazons, Googles, and Zuckerberg owned giants of the digital world. The tailored customer data driven experience is what we've come to expect as the norm. Across industries, businesses are investing heavily in strategic change initiatives, bringing their processes, platforms, and people into the modern era. The pandemic has forced organizations to boost IT investment in digital and tech, with legacy platforms overhauled or scrapped entirely for low-code, no-code solutions, third-party cloud-based platforms, and single customer views created through the convergence of automation of data throughout the organization optimization of processes, and, and ultimately building for scale and constant adaptation in the future. And all of this is fundamentally underpinned by the desire, like our clients was in the previous example, to work with more agility, to make decisions faster, reduce time to market, and deploy scaled agile frameworks throughout the business in order to negotiate the constant change and unrelenting complexities of the 21st century in business. As you can see from the LinkedIn stats shown, business analysis actually ranks as number six in the top 10 skills that companies need most based on a survey that was conducted uh, earlier on this year. And what's interesting to note is that business analysis was actually in the top 10 list in previous years as well. But the other skills that you see there um, have changed quite a bit. Skills like AI, UX, blockchain. Um, you know, these have seen rapid growth in terms of demand in the last few years. And yet throughout it all, the BA remains constant. The BA remains um, rooted at the heart of the future uh, success of the business, playing a, crit a critical role. However, in an era of rapid technological and digital transformation, businesses are having to adapt and business analysts do too. So let's take a look at the evolution of the BA. Throughout the years, the role of the BA has evolved always remaining pivotal in any type of change activity, of course. The widespread adoption of agile methodologies has brought about challenges as well as opportunities for the future of the role, changing the course of direction for the BA role in, in various ways. Most of us, particularly those of us maybe who work in uh, the regulatory side of financial services or just those who have a few more years under our belt, will be familiar with the waterfall model or what we at Capco refer to as the, tradi the traditional BA or traditional model. It's been around for a while with its origins in manufacturing and construction industries. And from a project and change perspective, the roles are well formed as are the responsibilities and role of the business analysts. The modern BA, or as we like to call it the agile BA is quite different and actually lends itself well to more of a hybrid role in many organizations something which some may find contentious, uh, and I appreciate that, but it is the reality of the environments that we're in today, where the BA can, can wear many hats. They can be acting, for example, as an assistant product owner or scrum master, sometimes even the product owner uh, with, with the BA role uh, or BA title. Olga's gonna look at both of these concepts uh, in a bit more depth in the, in the content that we share later on. Um, a recent quote that I came across from the IIBA, um, for those of you who don't know, that's the International Institute of Business Analysts, 
uh, ties in really nicely, I thought, with the, the BA of the future concept, which is another um, pillar that we're going to be discussing today. And the quote reads, business analysts may be involved in everything from defining strategy to creating enterprise architecture, to taking a leadership role by defining the goals and requirements for programs and projects, or supporting continuous improvement in its technology and processes. And so that I think ties in very nicely to the idea of yeah, the business analyst wearing, wearing many hats, but actually focused uh, predominantly more these days on, on strategy and, and shaping. The BA of the future, or perhaps if we were looking at a job ads uh, or job description, it would be uh, enterprise business analyst or even business architect, is all about strategic value creation through innovative business solutions and breakthrough capabilities. This role will be involved in complex enterprise change initiatives and should understand the holistic nature of change throughout the entirety of the organization embracing business architecture and balancing analysis and intuition. These BA, BAs may have a, a deeper knowledge in data, enterprise architecture and other emerging technologies, similar to the ones we showed in the previous slide, like AI or blockchain. With specialized knowledge across the business, IT and operations functions, these BAs are uniquely positioned and can act as part innovator, part solution designer. And finally, the no BA concept. So this is where there's not one person whose role uh, or responsibility it is to perform the role of the business analyst. And instead it's embedded throughout the team, enabling them to be self-sufficient and sustaining, ultimately reducing the reliance that they have on technology and IT. And obviously that concept can, can, can kind of bring up various um, complexities and, and challenges for any business. You might've heard of the, the citizen, the citizen developer uh, framework. But again, we'll talk through some of those in a bit more detail later on in today's content. Uh, as mentioned, please do continue to share any of your comments and feedback uh, in the Q&A. But uh, first up, uh, or next up rather, we're going to uh, jump on to our, uh, our poll. You should see the, the Zoom questions come up on your screen in a moment. And the purpose of this is that we'd like to understand a bit more about you and your experience as a business analyst um, in any capacity. So the questions, as you can see, uh, are you new to business anal uh, analysis? So zero to two years of experience. Do you have some experience in business analysis, three to five? Do you have strong experience in business analysis? Perhaps you're a career business analyst with 10 or more years experience, uh, or you are not currently operating in a business analyst capacity. So if you could take a, a moment to just provide your responses, this will give us a, a really good flavor for the types of profiles that we have on today's call. I'm quite interested to see this given the, the changing environment that we're all working in at the moment. Okay, so I see the, the results have, have come back uh, and some really interesting stats here actually, just to, to run through them. As a reminder, we've got around about, uh, from what I can see, 107 on the call today. So. 21% uh, are new to business analysis, zero to two years, 12% three to five years, uh, round about quarter, 24% strong BA experience, six to 10 years, 13% career business analysts, and, and interestingly, again, not a practicing BA, 30%. So I think that's, that's, that's really helpful to, for us to understand you know, the, the relevance of today's content. And I think it's safe to say that we've got a, a really good blend mix of attendees on the call. So thanks for providing those responses. And I'm now going to, to hand over to, to Olga uh, to talk a bit more about uh, the traditional BA concept. Over to you, Olga. Thanks, Johnny. So at first, I'm going to cover the core attributes of a traditional business analyst or waterfall business analyst, as is the alternative term that you mentioned earlier, John, too. In terms of mindset, activities, and skills, and then I will go over those of a modern BA so we can see how they differ and why the modern BA appears to be an organic progression of the traditional one. So starting from the mindset, the traditional BA is solution focused and emphasizes on understanding the solution requirements from the stakeholders point of view. The next point refers to the traditional BAs performing in depth analysis to make sure that every piece of the solution is clearly defined and can be thoroughly documented. 
And on top of that, they also try to be predictive in a sense that they rely on as detailed initial analysis as possible to meticulously document all the user requirements. The activities we come across here are the process mapping, where we frame the requirements through process mapping, UML diagrams, and use cases. And the requirements that come as a result of the process mapping are then comprehensively documented. We gain a sign now from the senior stakeholders and then hand these requirements off to the delivery team. And moving on to the skill set, the most frequently required or even the most characteristic skills of a traditional BA are the analysis of historic data in order to identify key requirements. Then it's the adoption of a traditional delivery method, which consists of a gated sequential delivery with clear separation between functional areas and specialists. And then we have a prescriptive and detailed writing and communication style. And this keenness of traditional BAs to maintain very detailed documentation applies to all kinds of artifacts, such as BRDs or testing documentations, etc. So if we'd like to summarize the key attributes of a traditional BA, this would be a requirements-oriented mindset with inclination for complete, comprehensive, and unambiguous requirements that are always defined up front. And at this point, it's also worth mentioning that we have an environment where change of requirements is very strictly controlled. The solutions are mostly non-negotiable, and the turnaround is usually long in order to be able to thoroughly document everything, as mentioned. So one of the key characteristics here is that as a traditional BA in the currently constantly transforming and challenging environment, we are not moving as fast as we could potentially be. So having said this, let's see how the modern BA operates. Modern BAs must be adaptable, making changes based on feedback and collaboration with the customer and the delivery team. And given the changing nature of this delivery approach, a modern BA must adopt a just-in-time mindset, meaning only defining the requirements as and when they are needed. So if we take a closer look at this, the modern BAs are expected to be able to get into the customer's shoes, show empathy, and always keep the product quality as a top priority. Modern BAs are an organic part of the wider feature team, and they try to create synergies to capture requirements that maximize the product's value. They're open to change when they see it, and they can be flexible about an unexpected change of requirements. And having said this, let me clarify here, as this is a common point of confusion, that this does not mean that the modern BA does not adhere to a plan or that they cannot stick to a commitment or an SLA. It only means that they can focus more on ensuring that the requirements meet the current business needs, even if it requires updating them later. So the key focus here is on getting quick feedback. Changes are anticipated in this environment and are welcome at any time. Now, coming to activities. The requirements are visually documented and they're framed through personas that represent the user groups. So instead of a process mapping, what we have here is a journey mapping. And by that, we mean capturing the target experience that the user of the product is going to have. And the BA's responsibilities in this case aren't limited to requirements documentation, but also cover support to the design teams, uh, the development and testing teams, and they also provide them feedback and clarification at all times. And as for the requirements documentation, they're constantly revisited and updated, and they don't have to be locked until they're actually up for delivery, like we saw that happens with a traditional BA. Now, when it comes to skills, modern BAs are able to interpret empirical data analytics and identify the requirements, and they use modern delivery methods such as agile design thinking, which by the way ties back to empathy, as mentioned earlier. Uh, another method is Lean, which focuses on continuous improvement, etc. And the writing needs to be succinct and descriptive, so that it's clear and understandable by the delivery team and the rest of the stakeholders. Actually, at this point, and while we're covering the skills section, I'd like to refer to a very interesting survey that LinkedIn published regarding the fastest growing skills for business analysts. So according to LinkedIn Learning, the five most common courses taken by people whose job roles is business analyst and select to learn through the platform are the following. First, we have data analytics, which makes sense as it's all about data now and all business decisions are data driven. Then we have Microsoft Power BI, which is a business analytics uh, service that provides interactive data visualization on dashboards. Then we have um, business analytics. Then we have Python, which is a simple to learn programming language that BAs use to manipulate data and streamline workflows. 
and actually it's a really good tool for big data too. And last but not least, we have Tableau, which is another tool, again, for the creation of interactive data visualization dashboards. But back to our slide and to summarize what we covered here, we can observe that opposite to the traditional BA, we have a flexible and open to changes mindset. We have an environment where requirements can be shaped collaboratively by the whole team. Uh, solutions can be negotiable, the feedback is continuous, and the turnaround is quick. And as mentioned earlier, it's worth noting that this is uh, that it, here we have customers driving these expectations. And I will explain what I mean by this. This is just that there's a desire from organizations to enhance the processing speeds. And as part of this, we see more and more often operations employees working directly with customers. So as organizations want to offer an enhanced service, uh, this generates the need for a faster and integrated technology that will allow for this smooth digitalized experience that organizations want to offer to their customers. And this is how this leads to a need for a modern approach uh, in business analysis. So after seeing the differences between the traditional and the modern BA, Johnny will now talk about what comes next in business analysis. Yes, thank you, Olga, the BA of the future. So now more than ever, we're seeing businesses shift rapidly in order to remain competitive in the market and adapt to these times of change. The future of business analysis then is going to be founded upon the technology-driven domain that we all operate in on a day-to-day -day basis. BAs are therefore going to need to broaden their learning, experience and expertise in order to remain relevant. And you'll see that's a constant theme of what we're, we're sharing today. The distinction that there was once between the business analyst and the technical analyst is blurred. Today, there's an expectation that BAs have the required technical skills, not necessarily in terms of being able to code complex mainframe systems, but more so around being able to confidently and effectively communicate with the technical teams. With the rise of uh, big data and the relentless appetite from businesses to, to leverage that data in order to derive insights on customers and use it to drive business decisions, the business analyst of tomorrow should not only be able to understand the data, but also have the ability to visualize it, to manipulate it, to use this information um, uh, that the organization holds in order to create value. Data analysis has become a core competency for the business analyst. A BA who is upskilled in areas like SQL, so maybe some of the tools that Olga mentioned before, like Tableau, um, has experience with these data visualization tools, other ones being um, Splunk, for example, at an enterprise level. Someone who has the aptitude to become a data analyst is going to be extremely attractive in tomorrow's market, in fact, in, in today's markets. And as the digital landscape uh, continues to change and evolve, business analysts will need to keep up to date with changing and emerging technologies, industry trends, and new ways in which their organizations can leverage these to grow, reduce technical debts, and enhance end user experience. Capabilities like AI and machine learning will become commonplace across strategic change initiatives. And BAs will be expected to not only be able to understand these concepts, but also innovate and provide strategic recommendations on where opportunities exist for the firms that they're working in. With the advent of fintechs and the shift to a buy over build culture, we're seeing a step change, moving from analysis towards ongoing product customization. A BA's involvement will not, once, uh, will not end once the technologies have been selected and the requirements have been defined. Instead, they will act as continuous agents of change, promoting and facilitating the iterative development of products with the business depending on their technical knowledge and their experience to continue the product evolution. And in the post COVID world, as the hybrid culture becomes the norm and we operate in the new world of reduced office space and increased remote working, BAs will need to adapt in order to affect change remotely There'll be an enhanced uh, or rather an increased importance on comms plans, milestone setting, all to ensure timelines are met and the delivery of expectations are crystal clear. BA should be equipped with core competencies to use digital tools to support team collaboration, prototype creation, and the collection and sorting of data. Tools like Jira Core for task management, 
Miro or Mural for remote workshop facilitation, or Postman for simple API development and testing. The distinction between the business analysts, where the focus is on developing business systems and processes, and the systems analyst who develops the technical requirements and implements the IT systems has faded. And the BA of the future will need to adapt to remain relevant through upskilling and expanding the tools in their toolbox. So now that we've talked through the BA of the future, let's take a look at the no BA concept, or as I mentioned before, the citizen developer concept. The surge of citizen developers and the revolution that we've seen in the last decade has been promising for businesses. What enterprise wouldn't want to be more agile while reducing their costs and bringing solutions to market faster? With overburdened IT functions who already have a growing backlog of digital transformation in initiatives uh, to deliver from across the business, opportunities for other solutions to fill in the gap have evolved and the citizen developer concept has emerged. In one of our recent Capco engagements, we supported the, the, the client to introduce this type of framework uh, within their operations team, no less. And we enabled the team to become self-sustaining and drive innovation from the ground up using uh, low-code, no-code solutions. You might have heard of, of Uncork, for example, or One System. In this case, uh, uh, it was actually through the use of a, a, a Blue Prism tool, which is an RPA, an enterprise-level RPA tool, where operations SMEs were upskilled to make the configurations and deploy within a fixed environment, reducing the reliance on technology teams. The citizen developer framework coexisted with the intelligent automation COE, or center of excellence, which comprised a team of experienced Capco engineers. All that was needed was for the ops team to have the inclination and the aptitude to become a citizen developer, and together the framework was defined. The operations SMEs were able to leverage their deep process knowledge and understanding of the end-to-end -end systems and their business users to get projects initiated much faster and they didn't have to wait around for resource allocation from other teams, which can often prove the bottleneck. In doing so, the team's scope and capability naturally grew as they became not only process and operations SMEs, but also able to self-organize and collectively agree on the prioritization of activities within the line of business that they operated in. The citizen developer framework had enabled a reduction in time to production and the ability for the team to adjust and iterate as needed capturing feedback from colleagues and end users in real time, all in order to make improvements to the solutions without impacting business as usual or delivery of the future state. With governance structures around security and regulatory parameters defined by technology, the development can be done in confidence the that the chance of inadvertently creating shadow technology is diminished and overall operational expenses are actually reduced. There are some cases, of course, where this model will be more of a challenge. And this might be because lack of expertise in teams uh, or subject matter awareness uh, or even kind of method awareness. So ability to use some of the tools in relation to iterative uh, development cycles or putting applications through development testing uh, production stages. It could also be due to a lack of vision, not necessarily in terms of, of what users want, but rather what the application will need to become next. So in future iterations and development or how it's gonna be maintained and evolved. Perhaps it's because of a lack of fit, the wrong tools and techniques have been applied to try and solve the problem. And without the subject matter expertise, the citizen developer might attempt to use the same tool or approach to fit, fit kind of every possible problem. And whilst the tool always allows you to avoid coding like a developer, it doesn't eliminate the need to think like one. For this type of framework, uh, citizen developer framework to thrive, the organizational culture needs to be right and the people in the team do too. So we've now walked through the four pillars or categories of the BA as we see them. You've heard about the traditional BA, the modern BA, the BA of the future and to the, the uh, no BA or citizen developer concept. We'd like to understand which one you identify with most either based on being a business analyst in this type of role, or for the 30% or so of you who said that you're not in a business analyst capacity for the, 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 the kind of team or the operations function that you're working in, in now. Who are you working with? How is the team structured? 
what aligns most in terms of the, the four pillars that we've discussed. So again, we'll give it a minute or so for the questions to come in and we can see what the split is across attendees today. Ah, very interesting. Okay, so again, just to run through the percentages, around 18% of people who responded um, see themselves as their traditional BA. So that's the, the kind of waterfall, um, the waterfall style. 46, almost half, 46% are aligned with the modern BA. Uh, BA of the future, very interestingly, is 23%. And so I'd like to speak to, to these guys um, in more detail to, to understand um, uh, uh, why you've given that response. And then the, the citizen developer, no BA uh, concept, 13%. And again, uh, it'll be good to, to hear from, from everyone uh, uh, as, to, as to why you've given those responses after the session. But with that being said, thanks for your responses, and we'll now head over to uh, Olga to talk more about the career pathways of a business analyst. Over to you, Olga. So, as we covered by now, BAs have a plethora of transferable skills, both hard and soft, that are always relevant to the market needs and can be applied to a variety of roles. Just to provide an example, the job title of a BA can vary from data business analyst or data scientist to ITBA and quantitative analysts. So we can see that business analysts and their skills are relevant across a wide variety of domains. Plus, you will always find BAs across the board in literally all kinds of industries, from financial services and consulting to healthcare, hospitality, and application development. What you see now on your screens is what can be a typical BA career to portray the several pathways and directions an analyst can choose from. Just keep in mind while looking at it that quite often, job titles and hierarchy levels can differ from one organization to another. So, having said this, most usually the starting career point is that of a junior BA. At this stage, one can either focus on business analysis or steer towards a series of product management roles, starting with PMO and progressing into delivery or project manager, then lead and head of delivery. On the business analysis side, a junior BA will typically progress to BA, and usually this happens after three to five years. Now, at that point, there are three career pathways. The first one I'll mention, which is usually heavier on the tech side, is system analysis. A system analyst who wishes to move higher can then progress into solution architect and then enterprise architect. The second pathway is quite wide and focuses more on the product domain. The options here are to follow the product manager path, which then develops to head of product and product director, or to become a lead BA and then a business architect, or to become a product owner and progress up to a value stream lead. Let me clarify here that this is a term widely used in agile methodology and refers to the person responsible for maximizing the value added to the overall product family, which was also mentioned earlier in our discussion as a trait of the modern BA. Now, the third option on the analysis slide is to focus on the Agile methodology, becoming a Scrum Master and building up experience, experience and Agile goals, helping teams adopt Agile ways of working and implement the best practices. And of course, it goes without saying that following one of these paths at any stage in your career does not restrict you from changing course in the future. And in fact, it's not uncommon for analysts to switch from one certain trajectory to another when they want to explore new angles or build up new skills and, as we repeated earlier, remain relevant. Now, moving on to the next section, what you see here is a recommended set of trainings delivered for CAPCO people in order to expand their skills and be able to tackle the ever-developing needs of our clients' projects. Um, it's a plethora of courses that CAPCO offers, aiming to cover the most up-to-date methods and tools that a business analyst can benefit from in order to adapt to the market needs. As you can see, there are plenty of programs, some focusing on agile methodology skills, such as Agile and Digital Agile BA 101 or Product Owner 101, and some others covering a broader spectrum of topics that can be beneficial and meaningful for a BA who is looking to enrich their skills and remain relevant, such as data analytics, machine learning, testing, et cetera. I'd also like to point out that this is a training we not only deliver internally, but we also offer to our clients in order to upskill their people in terms of business analysis, 
and to improve the experience of their workforce and enable them to focus on tech projects and in general make them more around business analysts. And the feedback we've had from organizations that deliver this training has been extremely positive. Not only are their business analysts feeling more empowered, but also at an organizational level, they're seeing much more effective delivery of strategic digital transformation programs. Also, these learning and development programs are helping our clients be more attractive when incoming product owners or data scientists or machine learning SMEs are looking at them as a potential employer because they're able on that way to signpost the fact that they have training programs for the specialists to help them continue to develop and actively support their growth. And at that point, Johnny will elaborate on what to take into account when building a BA community. Thank you, Olga. So if we think back for a moment to the context of the client situation that we covered at the beginning, we have helped them to identify the key traits across the primary BA types and profile their workforce, as well as given recommendations on how to structure the career pathways that Olga has just talked through uh, for their BA community uh, and how to kind of incorporate that into the learning and development plans. The next step then is to build and sustain the BA community within the organization. The first step is going to be all around identification. We need to understand the strategic objectives of the business and most importantly where there are gaps in the current workforce and their skill set. From here we can begin to establish what the future BA resource mix should look like. Do we need more people with experience in techniques like design thinking and data analytics? Or is there a gap when it comes to strategic analysis and more people with roadmap definition or enterprise state analysis is required? The business will be able to begin that mapping capability uh, or rather kind of maturity, maturity capability mapping by measuring through a self-assessment called uh, or rather conducted by individual BAs and through discussion with senior management or practice leads. Once this is established, it's time to develop a meaningful and comprehensive training uh, with the learning and develop, uh, development teams in the organization, enabling existing BAs in the firm to upskill and expand their capabilities, offering training and accreditation, and aligning the BA career path to project opportunities and skills progression. There will also be work uh, with the recruitment teams to put in place programs that will help to attract the best talent and position the firm as a great place to work, both for the business analyst and as, as Olga again mentioned, maybe the product owner or, or, the, or the data scientist, regardless of the stage of their career that they are in. In turn, helping to retain and attract the best talent within the market. Empowering those in the community and giving them the opportunity to try new things, whether that be new tooling, uh, in order to manage and run projects or new innovative solutions to find efficiency gains for the organization will help to maintain and encourage the innovative, iterative approach within the community. Promoting the sharing of best practices through brown bag sessions or lunch and learns will continue to help the fostering of a strong community, as well as uh, disseminating and sharing of information throughout the organization. This can be critical in terms of reducing any key man dependencies were someone to leave. What's really important here is that our BAs are given the platform to grow and to share their learnings. It's not mandated, but gives each person the opportunity to continue learning and developing by sharing diverse experiences around a common purpose and to network with other BAs in the organization, potentially in different departments or, uh, uh, or functions. Empowering those in the community is fundamental to scaling the practice. To scale effectively, control and direction should be distributed, united behind that common purpose, which is aligned to the strategic business objective. The community provides the, uh, the perfect platform for recognizing achievements and leveraging that success and learning across teams, forming common frameworks or processes that can be applied universally, further helping to create efficiency gain for the business. And this entire process is both cyclical and repetitive. Understand what has worked and what hasn't, analyze and assess the why, and work as a team to resolve those and make the necessary tweaks. There shouldn't be an end result here, per se. It's constantly evolving and growing in the same way the BA role has evolved so much over the last few decades. 
So with that, we've, we've come to the end of, of the key content for today's presentation, but I would like to do a bit of, uh, of signposting before we get to the Q&A, just on some useful capital content which relates to today's topic and which you might find useful. So as Sarah mentioned at the top of the call, uh, we've got a very strong BA community uh, in Scotland and, and, and throughout the UK here at Capco. Almost 40% of our people come from a BA background. So as a result, we've got a, a steady stream of high quality content from BAs in the field, ranging from shorter uh, form blogs to comprehensive white papers, all of which you can find on our website, capco.com, or by following us on LinkedIn, where we share uh, very regularly. Some of the recent papers you can see on the screen here contributed to the shaping of today's content. And I'd just like to, to take a moment to call out a couple in particular, which again, I'd, I'd highly recommend you go away and, and take a look at if you're interested in what we've talked about today. So uh, on the screen, you can see uh, Project the Product. Uh, I think that's number two. Um, so this is a really fascinating piece about how financial services firms are taking inspiration from the world of software development to move from a project delivery approach to a product management based one where change initiatives are managed by a dedicated team that retains ownership over all aspects of the relevant product or service. And the team, much like our no BA or citizen developer concept, continue to run the product post delivery as opposed to handing over an, uh, to an operations team focusing on the build, test, learn and repeat approach. And number four uh, in the list there, what's in it for me changes to what's in it for us. Uh, is centered around the collaborative mindset and approach that's been a constant throughout today's discussion and how the Capco team successfully brought together a number of siloed, geographically dispersed, remote working teams to work more closely together and share a unified vision uh, in order to create a sustained collaboration and significantly improved ops processes. Also worth noting that Olga, co-presenter today, uh, also authored that paper. So with all of that covered, and I appreciate we've got 10 minutes left only for Q&A, we're done with the presentation part and I'll hand back over to Sarah for the Q&A. Thanks, Johnny. Um, so firstly, thanks both of you for a very comprehensive um, overview. I think you can probably tell that Johnny and Olga are both quite passionate about this and I think they could both talk all day on this. Um, but yeah, we did we did uh, wrap it up there because there have been quite a lot of questions that have come through so far. Um, so I think Olga, maybe the first one is probably best answered by you. As someone who has worked throughout my career as a traditional BA, does the market shift towards more modern tech driven experience mean that my skills are now obsolete? No, this is by no means what we're trying to convey here today. Uh, the traditional BA skills are definitely not redundant. What we're saying here is more about solidifying those skills that traditional BAs have and helping in terms of growth in order to be relevant and adapt to the digital age we're living in now. And where we're seeing demand for all these new concepts like data science, machine learning, and everything else we've talked about today. And as we mentioned in the intro of today's discussion, the demands of both the pandemic impacted economy and employees appear to be shifting. More and more companies now demand different skills and BAs need to be cognizant of this. And like we said many times today, adapt accordingly. But, and we need to be adamant of this, but there's no doubt that traditional BA skills like communication, um, organization, stakeholder management, and so on will always be needed. What, what might be required at this point and what the discussion is about is a pivot just so you can stay relevant and competitive to the market's needs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so next one, Johnny, may be best for you in relation to the build out of the BA community of practice that you mentioned, how best to manage low engagement and encourage people to get involved. Yeah, good, good question. I think that's, um, that's always difficult, particularly at its inception, right, when things aren't necessarily fully defined and people aren't too sure exactly what it means to, to, to get involved. And say that the key is uh, fundamentally around, around communication, uh, keeping the community engaged. And um, I suppose that's become increasingly more difficult uh, whilst we've all been working, working remotely and, and that's presented its own challenges. At Capco, thinking of how we've done it, uh, we use Teams very effectively. So uh, using that platform, we manage all comms uh, within the community. We regularly share best practices, insights, recent work, 
Uh, we have a standing meeting every uh, Thursday, I think, in the diary, uh, where people can uh, join. Again, it's not mandatory, but people can join and um, will present recent successes and achievements that they've delivered. So that's, a, again, a really effective way of getting people involved. And I suppose another key point, uh, which I mentioned earlier, is around the importance of distributing control. So we've we've done that too. You know, we've we've aligned various roles and responsibilities, assigned those to people in the community. It gives that sense of accountability, I suppose, and the opportunity to shape something and make it my own. We've got someone responsible for arranging the events, um, for doing the internal comms, for knowledge management and governance of all the artifacts and teams. Obviously, is is, is great for that. And for following up with other teams and individuals in order to secure their time, perhaps, um, for one of the brown bag sessions to come and do a, do a talk. Um, we've also uh, implemented a buddying system. And this is uh, really pivotal, actually, for those people who are new joiners into the firm uh, or even into the, into the BA practice. It means that they've got an immediate contact. Uh, and um, and that support network essentially when they uh, when they start they know who to speak to and helps to build their network. Brilliant. I think um, whilst the pandemic, you know, and working from home has presented many problems personally and from what I've seen and what Johnny spoke about, teams and those kind of collaborative um, channels have actually really helped with engagement and setting up communities and people have somewhere to go where maybe they didn't necessarily have previously um, when everything was in person. So I've really noticed that. Um, okay, I'm going to, to continue on to the next because there's actually um, been quite a few questions around this topic. So maybe Olga, in terms of upskilling and reskilling, um, what are some of the key attributes to build if I want to transition into more of a modern BA role from current? Mm. Okay, so this transition is essentially a two-pronged approach. The first aspect would be the BA's individual effort in order to become more knowledgeable on current analytic tools and technologies, such as AI, machine learning, APIs, data visualization, or even also programming, as well as everything else we've mentioned earlier in this discussion. And it's critical for a modern BA to be up to speed with the continuous technological advancements and latest innovations and tools in order to be in a position to match the business needs and stay relevant. But the second part of the transition relates to both the individual and the organization. So beginning with the BA, there needs to be a mindset shift. It's about the business analyst acknowledging that the role is not only about writing BRDs and testing documentation. It's not about um, creating the documents and then sticking to them no matter what, but instead being able to see how they can maximize the product value and to be able to think in a holistic manner while at the same time, they embrace a more flexible and open to change mentality. And that is key here, that the mindset should move from traditional project-based and requirement-oriented to a mindset looking on how to add value. And this, of course, needs to be supported at an organizational and even more importantly, thought leadership level as well. So the leadership of the organization needs to be actively fostering an environment which is open to learning and allows occasional failure. They need to trust their people and their expertise and to be able to commit to develop a culture of collaboration and share responsibility, open feedback and trust and support their employees. Yeah, I think the the piece around, you know, leadership embracing and empowering individuals is really a, a really important one. There's a few a few questions here um, around that. Somebody saying that they're a product controller in a bank and is it possible to move to a BA role or how should they look for another way to start as a BA? So, yeah, I do think the leadership team um, empowering the company to, you know, take on that kind of BA element and the community practice is so important. Um, so Johnny, maybe one for you. Um, there's one here, you mentioned the growth of the hybrid BA role. Um, so what are the drivers behind this and what does it mean for me? Yeah, yeah. So I think, um, I think, I mean, fundamentally the drivers behind it are the environment that we're working in right now. Uh, the expectations that as a business analyst, um, or as a, as a business employing a business analyst, I'm going to be that person who can wear many hats, right? I can work with the designers on user experience. I could work with the development and solution teams on coding and APIs and understanding that. 
uh, you know, I, I, I have a, a fundamental understanding of, of all of those core concepts. Um, I don't, you know, I, I think it's worthwhile reiterating at no point are we saying that um, hybrid BA makes traditional BA redundant. That's absolutely not what we're saying throughout this. I think it's about the, the development of the development and refinement of the skills which are going to help to equip you as a business analyst or for the kind of senior managers on the call who are hiring business analysts, the way that you can put frameworks and processes in place in order to enable your business analysts to upskill uh, in order to supplement your, your kind of future business growth and ultimately you know, meet, meet those objectives. So yeah, I think, I think it's just about um, continuing to um, develop professionally and um, explore and um, and remain uh, interested and curious. I suppose that's that's one of the most important things, right? Keep doing what you enjoy absolutely. doing, but but challenge yourself too. Yeah, absolutely. So we have had so many questions. I think we've got nine or ten more questions that we unfortunately don't have time to answer. But we will work with Leah and the SIO to ensure that we get all of these questions answered and share with you in the follow up. I've seen a question asking if we'll be sharing the slides. So yes. Um, the SIO will be sharing um, the slides, uh, the links that were shared in the Q&A um, chat, and also we will answer all of the questions that have come in. And really a big thank you to everyone for having the engagement today. It was really fantastic to see so many questions. Um, and unfortunately, we can't have a conversation given that it's it's virtual, but hopefully next year we'll get to do an in-person um, event with the SIO when things return to normal and we can have a lot more further conversation on this. So thanks again, Leah and team for having us back. And thanks to everyone for attending today. Over to you, Leah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it's been really good to have you guys back on with, again, another very good subject, popular. Um, as I said, we'll, we'll share the slides, we'll, we'll ask for feedback on the session. And yes, we're all craving for a nice uh, in-person uh, session at some point in the near future. So uh, thank you once again. And please do keep in touch. Let me know um, if there are any questions if there's anything any follow-up or if there's anything i can forward on to sarah and the team uh, following up this session as well <laughs>